minutes until we get to that five minutes and hold. This is Lexi 1060, Brevard's most powerful radio station. This is uh, Don Manolo. I bring you a live coverage here. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're enjoying the weather out there anyway. I know it's a great day for a launch. And I don't want to disappoint any people out there. And I know NASA doesn't want to disappoint the thousands and thousands of people that are out here. This reboot of this Eastern Range system, typically, how long does it take? Do we have a window that's big enough to actually get this launch off today? I, I am very nervous about them being able to get it off the ground. They, they usually take some time. I've, I've heard them sometimes say it takes 20, 30 minutes to not only get the system restarted, get the backup systems going, but then to, con to confirm that all the data and everything they're looking at is, is working as it's supposed to. And we're just standing by here now. The, the orbiter basically sitting out at the pad. Crew strapped in, ready to fly. The pilot moments away now from being told to start the auxiliary power units. Yeah, we are go. Okay. They gave it go. Verbal command from the range commander. Picking up the clock. Ten seconds left. Two, one. They made it with three seconds to go. They made it with three seconds to go. The situation was, was as I heard it, was that the wing commander gave the verbal go, but there are buttons that need to be pushed in computer software that need to be recognized, and they weren't getting the uh, signal in the fire room. The fire room had to override that. I don't know if they did it manually or if they just did it because they could do it on their side since they had the authority to. Once they did that, they had to get the launch sequencer to go ahead and restart the clock. That takes a couple of seconds. They were able to get all those procedures done smartly, and uh, with three seconds left before the end of the, uh, the end of the window, they uh, they started it up. So we're in great shape right now at this point. Again, the 39th mission of Space Shuttle Discovery, the fleet leader, uh, NASA's most experienced orbiter. It has carried planetary probes. It carried the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit. Uh, just if, if it happened on the space shuttle, you can almost be sure that Discovery had a share of that action. Orbiter is being transferred. The orbiter power being transferred from the ground to the internal power at 31 seconds here, coming up in eight seconds. The uh, auto sequence start will, will kick in. The orbiter's computers will take control of the countdown, and that is happening right now. Shuttle computers are controlling the countdown. We're now doing the final purge of the main engines, getting ready to stand by to start the main engines at T-minus 6.6 seconds. Water deluge system has been activated. Water activation system on the pad. Go for main engine start. There's three engines. One, three, two, Discovery's final mission to the International Space Station now underway after a liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center after an incredibly dramatic countdown to launch in the last five minutes. Space Shuttle Discovery cleared the power and it's back and is on its way. Eight and a half minute climb into space now begun. 133rd Space Shuttle mission, the 39th for Discovery. And it looks like it always does. Whoa. Picture perfect. Look what an incredible view. Space Shuttle Discovery with six astronauts on board, making its final trip into space. And then after it's all said and done for the Smithsonian Institution, it's hard to believe that what's flying right now in another few months become a museum piece, but that is the direction our nation is direction that uh, that our space agency is supporting their friends and neighbors, thousands of them that work toward this, uh, toward this moment. Discovery looking good. Now going across the Discovery uh, moving through the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, moving through Mach 1. Acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hoba as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Engines looking really good here, not coming up on... Uh, on one minute. He's joined on the flight deck by pilot air. We're past that now. Through with the cold thought. And uh, all looking good so far with the launch of Discovery. Three good engines, two south rocket boosters firing. Steve is at the controls. Computer basically flying the vehicle into space. And, uh, and looking really good. South rocket boosters fire, as we know, for about two minutes and then they separate. <laughs> Discovery now traveling 2,000 
Fantastic and a dramatic launch, and I certainly appreciate the coverage this afternoon. 39 times Discovery has launched from the Kennedy Space Center. 38 times it's come home. It's going to do that one more time, but a lot of work between now and then. Absolutely. We've got, uh, we've got cargo to deliver. We've got two spacewalks to do. We've got a new robot, robot to test out in space. It's going to be a great week ahead here. Uh, as again, NASA does what it does best to fly humans in space. And we'll lament the loss of everything later. But for now, let's revel in the fact that, once again, our Kennedy Space Center team has done the impossible, has performed a miracle, and gotten this thing safely into orbit because every one of these flights is nothing short of a miracle. That's very true. By the way, quick note from Dave Bowman, my counterpart in Modesto, California.